This video is brought to you by Brilliant.org. Hi, welcome to another episode of Cold Fusion, where I cover anything in science, technology, business or history. It seems that at the start of this decade, the 2020s, the electric car industry is leaving behind the niche of tech enthusiasts and environmentalists and shifting into the mainstream. Common brands like Ford, Hyundai, Kia and Volvo having their own EV models signifies this as a clear signal. And boy has this been interesting for me to watch happen. I remember back in 2011, whenever I would make early cold fusion videos about Tesla, people would laugh. There would be comments saying, electric cars would never work. EVs had been tried many times before. Leaving Tesla completely aside for now, there's no arguing. It is true that electric cars have a simpler power plant and transmission, require less maintenance, have instant torque, and generally perform better than their petrol counterparts. That being said, there's still room for improvement. EV battery technology remains as one of the last hurdles. It still causes hesitation for would-be buyers. We've covered some research progress before, but what you're about to see today is interesting because it's been proven to work in a vehicle with impressive results. Imagine driving over 1,200 kilometers or 750 miles on a single charge by swapping out a standard battery in a Tesla Model S with a new experimental one. In this episode, we'll take a deeper look. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. The fledgling EV industry collectively has come up with a contemporary solution to range anxiety, and they're simply called charging networks. They're all over the US and are popping up in parts of Europe and other nations around the world. The aim is to make sure that you've always got the option to charge when you're in a pinch. The only thing is, there's often problems. Sometimes the charging stations break. There can also be waiting times and different cars can unfortunately use different networks altogether. It's obvious that better batteries are a great solution to a lot of these problems, but how can we do this? An interesting method for solving this battery problem was thought up by the Michigan-based startup Our Next Energy, or One Inc. Their method was to split the battery into two. They call this dual battery system Gemini. For a visual representation, take a look at this chart. On the y-axis is statistically how much the average driver would travel a given distance daily. Distances are shown on the x-axis. The overall chart describes the Gemini battery system. Let's start with the left-hand side of the chart. Depicted in blue is a low-cost but robust lithium-ion phosphate battery. Its job is to do the daily drives and the heavy lifting under 150 miles or 241 kilometers. On the right-hand side, there's a secondary high-energy density battery. This battery technology can extend the range up to 750 miles or 1,200 kilometers. The exact details of what goes on in this battery are scarce. We just know it's proprietary. That normally could raise some red flags, but we'll discuss some issues of trust later in the episode. The thinking of the battery system goes something like this. Most people rarely do more than 60 miles or 100 kilometers of daily driving, so a regular battery can handle that. But when those rare times come, and there's a need to do greater distances, the second battery can take over. Since there isn't much info on the proprietary battery technology, I would have to assume that a drawback of such long range would have to be the stability of the chemistry. That is, while the battery may have a high capacity, it may not have as good a long-term battery life. In other words, if you keep recharging and discharging it too often, it will degrade. But in this use case, that's okay, because it's not going to be used remotely as often as the workhorse short-range battery. This experimental battery was swapped into a Tesla Model S. It takes the same amount of space as the standard pack, but it contains twice the energy, that is, 203 kilowatt hours versus 103.9 kilowatt hours. That's massive. The energy density definitely showed its effectiveness. Traveling at an average speed of 55 miles per hour or 88 kilometers an hour, the car clocked in over 752 miles or 1,200 kilometers without the need to recharge. It traveled so far that even accompanying cars had to stop for fuel to fill up. The results were validated by a third party using a vehicle dynamometer. Another test under controlled conditions indoors rated the battery pack at even higher, 882 miles or 1,419 kilometers, and this was at the same speed. So we have to put this into context just to see how remarkable this is. To give you an idea, 1,400 kilometers of range on a single tank 
would put this car as one of the longest driving cars of any kind that you can buy. The website drive.com.au did extensive testing of over 400 petrol and diesel cars. The average range was about 780 kilometers or 484 miles. In fact, there was only one car that did better than this experimental battery, a diesel Toyota Land Cruiser, and that has a massive fuel tank. This is very interesting. Okay, so now we get to the questions. Who is this one company? And how did they come from nowhere and do all of this? Is this a big scam? Well, a good place to start would be with credibility. One's founder, Mujib Ijaz, has a colorful career. According to his LinkedIn resume, he was heavily involved in the first production and applications of iron phosphate-based lithium iron batteries for automotive use. The battery powered the winning car, the Porsche 919 Hybrid, in the 24-hour Le Mans race. His previous company, A123 Automotive, produced battery systems for Fisker Company and for Chevrolet Spark EV. In 2014, he then went on to work as a senior director in Apple, working on energy storage. He would quit in 2020 and then founded One. In total, he's got 30 years of being a battery systems engineer. So to me, it seems like he would be someone who would fit the bill. So this demonstration is truly groundbreaking, if all is as it seems. But just because of the state of everything these days, it also must be taken with a grain of salt. There's going to be a few questions that need to be asked. If you drive aggressively, does the battery's range advantage fall off rapidly? What about city driving? How long will the battery keep charge over repeated charge and discharge cycles? What about the cost? Fortunately, we'll know more next year when one will demonstrate a presentation of the prototype Gemini battery system. But as it stands for now, Driving on a single charge for 1,200 kilometers or 760 miles, or even 1,400 kilometers and 882 miles on a single charge in ideal conditions, just opens up the door for the next chapter in EVs in general. I generally and genuinely think this is awesome and definitely something to keep your eye on. If this company does indeed accomplish this by putting it into production, this is only a great thing for all of us as consumers. So more power to them. If you find technology inspirational and you want to understand more, learning how things work can be rewarding, both in a personal and professional sense. Brilliant is the best way to learn STEM subjects in a fun and engaging way. They have courses on cryptographics, machine learning, physics, chemistry, and more. It's a great foundation to get a handle on our rapidly evolving world. Today, if you visit brilliant.org slash cold fusion, you can start learning STEM for free and the first 200 people will get 20% off their annual premium subscription. Okay, so that's about it from me. My name is Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion. If you do want to discuss this topic more in depth, head on over to the Cold Fusion Discord. I'm a bit more active on there these days. Also on the Cold Fusion Discord, we have an area for video suggestions. So if you want to see a new video topic, go ahead and suggest it there. But you should keep in mind that it has to appeal to a broad audience. To ensure this, other members of the Discord can rate your suggestions. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon for the next episode. Cheers, guys. Have a good one.